Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today we're going to be talking about torque and how it relates to electric bicycles. We'll also discuss how it's interrelated with power, though because we've talked about power before, and I'll put a link up here for anyone who wants to see my previous video on e-bike power, we're going to start with torque today. All right, now we're not going to get too deep into the physics, but we do need to visit physics a little bit here to talk about what torque is, and then we're going to get into the practical e-bike stuff. So torque is defined as a turning force, and it's measured as force times distance. What that means is that you apply a force, but at a certain distance from the axis of rotation of whatever you're going to be turning. Now the most common example that we usually see when we talk about torque is a nut and a wrench. So imagine a nut like one that's holding on the wheel of my bike back here. If I were to just wrap my fingers around that nut and try to loosen it, I probably would not succeed. And it's not because I'm not strong enough, it's because I don't have enough torque. So how would I create more torque to open that nut? Well, I'd use a wrench, of course. And what that does is it changes the distance from where you're applying the force to that nut. Your strength didn't change, your power didn't change, you still have the same arm muscles, but because you're applying that force at a larger distance from the axis of rotation, from the center of that nut, you're actually applying more torque. So that's all torque is. It's the force of turning. It's how hard something is turning. So when we apply that to an electric motor, take a motor on my bicycle back here, we can see that torque is actually how hard the motor is turning. So now let's talk real world here. Let's take, for example, a hub motor. If you're not familiar with what's inside a hub motor, basically in the outer ring you have magnets and in the inner ring you have copper coils. And the way the motor works is when you pump current through those copper coils, it creates an electromagnetic force that turns the magnet ring. That electromagnetic force that turns the motor, that's the force in our torque equation. And the distance is how far away that ring of magnets is from the center of the motor. So if you want to increase the torque in an electric motor on an e-bike, you could do it in a few ways. One would be to increase the distance that the magnets are away from the axis of rotation, from the center of the motor. And that's why larger diameter motors usually have more torque, because that force is being applied further away from the axle of the motor. Another way to do it is just to increase the electromagnetic force. So that could be using stronger magnets, using more copper, pumping more current through, basically any way you increase the force. So to increase torque, you either increase the force or the distance or both. Okay, so that's what torque is. Like we said, torque is simply a measure of how hard something is turning. With an e-bike motor, it's how hard that motor is turning, how much turning force there is. Power, on the other hand, is something different. Power is a rate of work being performed. If we actually break it down to the physics again here for a second, power, if we speak in watts, which is what we usually use with e-bikes, one watt is one joule per second. It's an amount of energy being converted in an amount of time. So that's very different than torque. They're related. I mean, they're not just related, they're actually interconnected. One is a function of the other. To get power, you would actually take the force times the distance times the RPM. And what did we talk about force times distances? Well, that's just torque, right? So power is actually just torque times RPM. If you increase the RPMs, you're gonna get more power. If you increase the torque, you're gonna get more power. Power isn't how hard the motor is turning, that's torque. What power is, is the amount of work that's being done in a certain amount of time. So if we take, for example, two different e-bikes that have two different power levels, a higher power e-bike motor is going to be able to do more work in the same amount of time, or it's going to be able to do the same amount of work in less time. So now let's talk in real world terms again. We already know what torque is, it's how hard the motor is turning. And we know what power is, it's the rate that work is being done. Work in this case being just the e-bike moving forwards, forward progress. If we wanna look at an example of what different amounts of torque and power mean, we can take two different e-bikes and put them in a hypothetical race. Let's start with torque. If we have two e-bikes, one has a motor with 30 newton meters and one has a motor with 60 newton meters, we have one e-bike that has twice the torque of the other one. If we put both of these on a hill and we start slowly increasing the size of the hill so we get a steeper and steeper and steeper hill, eventually we're going to get to the point where the 30 newton meter motor is not able to go up the hill anymore. It just can't turn hard enough. It doesn't have enough torque. At that point though, the 60 newton meter motor is going to be able to continue up the hill. It might not go very fast, that's a pretty steep hill, but it's going to be able to continue making progress and will be able to continue making this hill steeper and steeper until eventually the 60 newton meters won't be enough torque either. It won't have enough force of rotation. But as you can see, the higher torque motor is able to climb a steeper hill. 
Now let's take power as an example. Again, power is the amount of work being done in a certain amount of time. So in this case, the work being done if we were doing an e-bike race would be the e-bike moving from the start to the finish. So let's say we have two different e-bikes. One is a 250 watt European e-bike and the other is a 750 watt American e-bike. The 750 watts is three times the power of the 250 watt weaker e-bike. Now if we put both of these e-bikes at the bottom of a hill and we do a race, intuitively we know which one is going to win, right? Of course the higher power e-bike is going to win, it's going to rocket up that hill quicker. But why is that? Well, if we look at what power is and the definition of power, we can really understand why this happens. The work in this case is moving from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill. And so if the higher power e-bike can do more work in the same amount of time, or in this case, the same amount of work in less time, it's gonna take less time to perform that work and get to the top of the hill. That's what a higher power e-bike is. It's an e-bike that's capable of doing more work in less time. Now let's look at flat ground. So for example, if we have a quarter mile race between that weaker 250 watt e-bike and a stronger 750 watt e-bike. Again, we know that 750 watt e-bike is gonna win the drag race, but why? Again, all you have to do is look at the equation. So if power is work performed over time and the work is getting from the start to the finish of the race, then the more powerful bike will do that amount of work in less time and it obviously wins the race. So that's the whole idea. Torque and power, they're different things entirely, but they're interconnected. Higher torque means that you can power up a larger hill because you have more force of turning. It also means that you can accelerate quicker because you have more force of turning against the resistance when you're accelerating. But power is all about how much work you can get done quickly. A bike that has higher power can go faster. It can win the race. It'll get to the top of the hill first simply because it applies that torque in less time. All right, let's do one more example here and see if you can determine which e-bike is going to win. Let's say we've got one e-bike that's 500 watts and it is 25 newton meters, and we have another e-bike that is 250 watts and it is 50 newton meters. So bike A is quite powerful but has half the torque and bike B has less power but has more torque. And let's say we put them in a flat land race. Which one's gonna win? Well, I'll give you a second to think about it. Right, so the answer is that the bike with more power is going to win the race, like we discussed before. Because it can do the same amount of work in less time, it's going to get to the finish line first because power is all about a rate of work being done. It's the rate of forward progress of an e-bike or upward progress if the e-bike is going up a hill. All right, I hope that cleared it up. Torque, it's how hard the motor turns. Power, it's the rate at which work is done. It's the rate at which the bike can move, can complete a certain amount of distance or climb a certain hill. Before I go, if you did not see my previous video, then I definitely recommend going and checking that out. I'm giving away five free e-bikes to anyone who had a tough go of it this year. Anyone whose 2020 was a rough year and an e-bike could improve your situation and make your life better. Go check out my previous video. You'll see how to enter and hopefully you will win a free electric bike from Rad Power Bikes. There's only one day left to enter, so make sure you go do that. There's already over 700 entries and I'm a little bit worried it's going to take me a while to go through these. But after tomorrow, when the entry closes, I will try to go through those as quickly as possible, and I will come back with the five winners. Last but not least, uh, before I go, I always do a giveaway at the end of every video where one randomly selected commenter from my previous video gets a copy of one of my books for free. And the randomly selected commenter from my last video is... Paul Barwick. So congratulations, Paul. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or Electric Motorcycles. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be randomly selected at the end of my next video. And anybody who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win a free book, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you here next time.